What's up guys, welcome to a new video. Um, hope everybody is safe and sound by the way during these pretty crazy times that we're living in. Um, anyway, today we're going to be breaking down a pretty successful print on demand Shopify store. Um, these guys are consistently doing in excess of a hundred grand per month. And in this video, we're going to be looking at how. So as somebody who's been running Shopify stores now for the past four years, um, in fact, it'll be four years next month. Then one thing I like to do to try and kind of stay ahead of the curve, if you like, is follow these success Shopify store, sign up to their newsletters, follow them for two, three weeks, maybe a month, maybe two months at tops, um, and just kind of look at the way they run their business, the kind of way they do things, and see if there's anything I can learn from them and actually implement into my own stores. Um, if you guys are beginners looking to get involved in dropshipping, Shopify, e commerce, or print and demand, then I highly recommend you adapt this strategy as well because there's no one better to learn from than somebody who is walk in the path that you want to walk. As corny as it sounds, it is true. For example, you wouldn't learn how to get your driving license from somebody who doesn't have a driving license. So that's exactly what I wanna do in this video. Um, thank you for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoy this one. If you do, please do make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to leave any comments or questions you have as well. I read every single one, so I will respond to you. And finally, I am uploading on average, I'd say four videos per week. So if you do like my content, please do make sure you subscribe now um, to stay up to date with what I'm doing. That being said, let's jump straight into it. So the store I wanna show you guys then is called crownandpoor.com. I've been following these guys for about two or three weeks now. Um, and to tell the truth, I'm pretty excited to show you because the way they have things set up, the kind of products they sell, the way they go about doing things, um, is really simple, but really effective. And for people who watch this channel, who wanna advertise on a social media platform like Facebook and Instagram, then these guys are pretty much as good as it gets. If you watched my previous video on picking products, then you know exactly why this is true. There's no better product to sell on a social media platform than a product that people are passionate about and there's no better subject or there's no better topic that people are more passionate about than their pets. So as you can see, as I've been on the site, we've had a 10% pop-up. For all new business store owners out there, to be honest, I wouldn't recommend having a pop-up. I personally, um, and from what I've experienced in the past, people only ever give their contact details to people that they trust. If you're a new business with zero following across all your socials, then nobody's gonna trust you. Nobody's gonna wanna give you their email address. You have to give some value first in order to receive something from your customer. The reason these guys do it and the reason it works for them is if we take a look at their Facebook page, uh, we'll zoom in here, we can see they have over 100,000 likes on their Facebook page. And on their Instagram page, they have 174,000 followers. So before people even get to their website, people are naturally gonna trust them because they have such a considerably large following. With that being said then, how do I know these guys are doing six figures per month? The easiest way to find out now, if they're a public company, then of course you can go into the public records, the company's house if they're based in the UK, and you can find out by looking at their past returns. However, there is a quick way of doing it. You can install a free Chrome extension called Similar Web. As you can see, you get this pop-out drawer, but there's also a website that you can go to where you get more information. But this is more than enough, to be honest. As we can see, their monthly visitors on average are 291,000 people. In November, they had 600,000, December 400, and then a slight dip naturally as you would expect to see for Q1. They had another dip in February and March, but I think everybody did. I had a massive dip in my sales during these months as well because this was the time in which the pandemic was kind of announced to everybody. But as we can see, things are kind of going in the right direction. And in April, they increased their monthly visitors to 290,000. Now, when it comes to kind of gauging how much or how that kind of translates into sales, then a rough rule of thumb, don't hold me to this, is about for every one visitor is about one pound. Certainly when I look at my stores, then it works pretty well to money. Sometimes it's it's probably one pound per visitor, give or take about 20%. So if I had to take a guess for these guys then, given that their average monthly visits is 290,000, I would say their revenue is probably anywhere from kind of 200 to maybe 300K a month. But what I find most valuable then by using this, um, by using similar web, is it also tells you where the traffic is coming from by country. So once you've found a successful business, you always wanna find out where the majority of that business is coming from because potentially it leaves spaces or gaps in the market for you to come in and replicate the business model but do it in other countries. So for example, we can see that the majority of this comes from the US and a very tiny percentage comes from the UK. So 
what you would do at this point is try and find any suppliers in the UK that have kind of dominating the market and producing and selling a similar product to this. And if there isn't, then we can quite clearly see there is a demand for this product by the sheer amount of traffic these old guys are getting. But if they're not dominating it in every single country, then it leaves a potential business opportunity for you to go into. That being said, let's turn our attention to the ads um, Crown and Poor are currently running. I've gone straight to the bottom of the page so we can see the ones that have been running for the longest. And we can see they've been running some Facebook ads, just single image, pretty straightforward ads. Um, since September 25th, 2019. So they wouldn't be paying to run these ads and for them to still be active if they weren't profitable. What we can also see as well is that these two here at the bottom on the left are also dynamic ads, there's multiple versions. And what that basically is, is when you have a catalog, so you've made the link between your Shopify store and your Facebook page, and you have a catalog of products on Facebook, you can create dynamic ads. And what it will essentially do is Facebook will chop and change the creative and only show the one that performs the best. It's essentially the same as having a dynamic um, add to cart button on your product pages. If somebody shows a history of PayPal being their preferred payment method, then Shopify will show a PayPal checkout button on that product page instead of say a Google Pay or an Amazon Pay one. So just to give you a quick example then of how dynamic ads work. If I open this one up, we can see you select multiple different versions from your catalog and then Facebook will then match that to the audience depending on which one performs the best. As kind of like an overview then, because I'm always really interested in watching ads that people create and run, especially ones that have been running for a significant amount of time because like I mentioned earlier, they wouldn't be paying to run these ads if they weren't profitable. We can see that all single image ads so far it just goes to show you don't need to do anything crazy or anything special or expensive on Facebook if you have a product that's gonna capture people's attention. Something you may not have noticed either about these Facebook ads, which is extremely important. And one of the reasons why I love this product so much is that a lot of these ads are social proof and they're advertising the social proof. So for example, when you're drop shipping typical physical products, not everybody is gonna take a video of their new vegetable slicer, a video of their new exercise bands. Whereas with a product like this, everybody wants to show off their pets because everybody thinks their pet is really cute and really funny and they wanna share it with the world. So when they receive a product like this, people naturally will wanna take a picture of it, put it on Instagram, and then at the same time, tag Crown and Poor, and then Crown and Poor can use it in their Facebook ads, they can post it on social medias. If we go into Instagram, just have a look at the kind of posts they're putting out. So this looks like an order from a customer. So does this one. Um, this is obviously social proof. This looks like an order from a customer. Every other post almost is like a social proof post, and it's just a great way to kind of build up a reputation, build up a brand, and build up that trustworthiness with your customers. Another reason of why it's such a good product is because you don't necessarily have to sell it in order to come up with social proof for it. So for example, this one on the top right here, the couple of rabbits, this doesn't even have to be printed. This could just be created digitally, um, put onto a canvas print using a tool like Placeit, but it looks like somebody has actually paid for this and ordered this. So it's actual social proof, even though you haven't sold anything. If we have a look at the bio, you can see they're asking people to tag them in their photos once they receive their product. If we have a look at their stories, so social proof post, a social proof post onto a phone case, another social proof post, another phone case, and um, they've had a feature in Forbes, which is obviously brilliant for trustworthiness and credibility. Another social proof post from a customer tagging them, more social proof from another customer, um, more social proof from another customer, more social proof from another customer, and you kind of get the story. Anybody who come across is, come across is, come across, anybody who's gonna come across this page, there's gonna be no doubt whatsoever this is a legit business with a legit product that people like. And that is the number one obstacle as a new business owner that you're gonna to have to overcome. So something I see a lot of people forgetting to do is they'll run Facebook ads for three, six, nine, 12 months, which is fine, but they'll forget to post content on their pages. And if you've been running ads for a while, you'll know that you'll get a lot of page likes even though you're running conversion campaigns. And that's because a lot of people will go to your social pages, check you out, make sure you're legit before they make that purchase. So if they see your ad, they go onto your page and you haven't posted anything for six months, it doesn't look very current, it doesn't look like you're active. And again, it's gonna go down that road of your customer not trusting you. If we take a look at these guys, so this was posted less than 24 hours ago on Instagram. And if we head over to their Facebook page and we need to zoom out a little bit, it's the same post, I think, was it the same post? It was, but still it's within 24 hours. There's another post, even if it's the same content, it still shows that you're active as a business. Being in the dog niche as well, these guys will never struggle to find content to post on their page. We can see this video here. Now they may have created this themselves. The chances are, if I had to bet money, I would say they didn't. 
content, but they've posted this, they've had 65 engagements, which they're gonna get organic reach off of. They've had 73 comments, probably people um, tagging their friends if we just open these up. Um, so tagging their friends, tagging their friends, tagging their friends, tagging their friends, tagging their friends. So again, even though it's somebody else's com um, content that they're posting, people are sharing it, people are commenting, and at the end of the day, um, it's building the crown and poor brand. Moving on to their website. So what I'll do is I'll just go through it and just point out kind of like the key features. Number one is they have their logo. It literally is just their name, but in kind of like a royal font. So it kind of works nicely. They obviously have two really big high quality images which show their products um, in all their glory. And if we scroll down, we can see social proof, social proof, social proof. Every single product image here is social proof. It shows somebody's pet and then it shows the finished article, the finished products, which is, it's just always reinstilling in your customer's mind how good your product is and how many people have bought this product before you. If we look at the review numbers, which is absolutely crazy, 900 reviews, 800 reviews, 900, 370 there's just going to be no doubt whatsoever whoever comes onto this website is going to trust this website and if they like the products they're going to go ahead and buy it and then just to build on the social proof front with reviews we can see they actually have it in their menu bar um, in the header at the top of their site so anybody who comes onto their site immediately can see the fact that they've got a page specifically reviews and they can come on here and there's over 8,000 reviews all of different images um, all really good reviews of their different products there's just so much proof and evidence behind how good this product is like I mentioned earlier there's just gonna be no doubt whatsoever anybody who comes onto this site is going to know this is a legit business and again without sounding like a broken record but the number one obstacle you're gonna to have to overcome is whether people the visitors the customers to your site will actually trust you or not I see people out there selling really good products that are in demand but it's just their stores that lack them there's no social proof or evidence that customers have come before them purchased the product and been happy with it if your customers your visitors trust your business then your profit margins will just completely transform. There's been hundreds of studies in the past. The number one reason why somebody doesn't buy from an online website is because of trust. And on that note then guys, I'm gonna wrap the video up there. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do make sure you hit that like button now. Um, any comments, questions, video suggestions, just post them down below. I read every single one, so I will get back to you. Make sure you subscribe as well for regular content for videos every single week. And finally, if you guys are looking for a course that comes with my full support and guidance, make sure you do check out my ecom academy there will be a link in the video description below finally then thanks again for watching and hopefully see you in the next one